One of the most important features or characteristic of a system is an appreciation for interdependent, interdependence and interaction of components or parts. A system must have a name. Without an aim, there is no system. In other words, the system must have a purpose. And the parts and the components interact and they are interdependent to achieve that aim or, an, or that purpose. The efforts of the various divisions in a company, each given a job, are not additive. They are interdependent. Their efforts are interdependent. We don't work in isolation. Let's look at some of the features of interaction and interdependencies. How, how they, must ha they must be managed. Let's assume an organization or a system has many parts, A, B, C, and so on. The contributions from individual components is A plus B plus C plus D and so on. The contributions from interactions. When parts, component A interacts with component B, we have A, B interaction, A and C, we have A, C interaction, A, D, we have A, D interaction, and so on. These are called two-way interactions. Two managers, two departments, two shifts, or two components of the system. We also have three-way interactions. When A, B, and C interact, we have A, B, C. When A, B, and D interact, we have A, B, D, and so on, and four-way interactions. As you can see, considerable amount of contributions come from interactions among the parts. So the interactions must be managed. The interactions may produce a negative outcome, they may cancel each other out and be zero, or they may produce, m produce and we hope, a positive interaction or outcome. The company as a whole may be less than the sum of its parts, depending on how we manage the interactions. As Dr. Deming has previously reminded us, that most of the gains or losses in an organization are due to interactions, how we manage the interactions and interdependencies. So therefore the optimization in an organization depends on how we manage the interactions and interdependencies. The greater the interdependence between the components, the greater will be the need for communication and cooperation between them higher the level of interactions and interdependence, there is a greater need for communication and, and cooperation. Therefore, optimization is a process of orchestrating the effort of all components toward the achievement of the stated aim. The word orchestrating here can be thought of as an orchestra, as an orchestra and the, uh, the conductor. How a conductor uh, orchestrates uh, the efforts of all the components, all the musicians on the stage to optimize the performance. Counter to that is when the components of the system are divided, each given independent uh, objectives and goals, it amounts to um, dividing each part each component of the organization, suppliers and production, receiving, inspection, assembly, distribution, and so forth, and, and each given an independent objective and goal that could, re that could lead to a zero or negative interaction. The basic assumption here is to divide the organization into, par into independent parts optimize the p and optimize the parts. If you optimize the parts, you optimize the whole. I am reminded Dr. Deming's uh, suggestion that four solos does not make a quartet. All the four, four components must work together. And the optimi optimizing the pieces destroys the effectiveness of the whole. They must work together. They must interact for the purpose of the system. Here the purpose is aimed at the consumers. That would lead to a sub-optimization, and one of the uh, 
the structures in an organization that that promotes uh, sub optimizations how we create competition among the parts competition leads, leads to sub optimization of the system it creates a win lose relationship therefore a system must be managed it will not manage itself left to themselves in the western world as dr deming says components become selfish competitive independent profit centers so we so we must think systemically and so the principles of system thinking are without an aim the components of the organization have no directions the aim and the purpose is very important it gives direction to all the parts as we have seen in the organization viewed as a system all the parts are aimed at the consumers the best aims are connected to customers and the customers needs a shared aim helps to break the barriers it promotes cooperation and support all the pieces must be headed in the same direction to function as a system as we said um, a shared aim provides an alignment optimizing the pieces destroys the effectiveness of the whole here a reference to managing the interactions and interdependencies optimization requires cooperation win-win situation since the parts interact and they are interdependent cooperation is is imperative blame the process not the person oftentimes people and individuals in an organization are blamed for the outcome of the system and the process people are a component and a part of the system but do not represent the entire system so the aim and the purpose of the system is very important here without an aim we all pull in all different directions random walks in the in this case when we have orchestrated efforts and a purpose we all move in the same direction and the aim is connected to the customer needs